In this psychology revision video, we will review Piaget and his theory of cognitive development from paper one, topic three, development. What exactly do we need to know when it comes to Piaget for the development topic? Well, we need to know Piaget's stages of his theory of cognitive development. We need to be able to evaluate Piaget. We need to be able to talk about what Piaget's work did for the education system and what he recommends for learning. We need to know the hughes policeman doll study, and we need to know McGarrigal and Donaldson's Naughty Teddy study. So let's get to it, because there's quite a lot to get through in this one. So firstly, uh, Jean Piaget, a um, very, very famous psychologist, uh, had a theory on how the brains of young children develop, um, sort of from the ages of naught to a sort of 11 plus. And he called his theory the theory of cognitive development. And there's that word in the middle which could cause some problems, cognitive. Now, cognitive comes from the word cognition, which is all about uh, all the mental processes that are happening in your brain all the time, like thinking, planning, problem solving, perception, sensations, conservation, all of these things that are going on in your brain. They are mental processes. So that's basically what his theory is about, how a child's brain develops to allow them to do new cognitive skills. Uh, so Piaget said that there are four stages to a child's intellectual and cognitive development, and I'm going to run through them for you again very quickly now. So the first stage is the sensory motor stage, and that's from naught to two years old. And the key thing you need to know about this stage is that it's all about object permanence. Now, object permanence is knowing that an object still exists even when it is out of sight. So you might remember in class, we would have given a little model demonstration of putting a teddy, um, probably Jeffrey, underneath a blanket. And we would have explained how to a one year old, they would probably just think that Jeffrey vanished and gone forever. But a child that is closer to two years old would know that Jeffrey is still under the blanket and would probably just take the blanket off and go and grab Jeffrey. Uh, so that's object permanence, knowing that an object still exists, even when you can't see it. Then when a child moves into the second stage, the pre-operational stage from ages two to seven, um, there are a few more cognitive problems. Those problems are conservation and egocentrism. So children uh, have difficulties with these two things. So as a refresher, conservation is knowing that the amount of something stays the same, even though it looks different. Um, that's basically conservation is holding on to knowledge, holding on to information for a brief period of time. And children really can't do that. But also being egocentric. So this is when children are unable to see something from someone else's point of view. They can only see things from their own mindset. So just to talk about these two words in a bit more detail, have some pictures to refresh your memory here. So on the left hand side, we've got some examples of how Piaget would have tested uh, for conservation. The most famous one being the glasses of water. Uh, and what we would do is we take two glasses of equal amounts of water, take one of them and pour it into a taller glass. And then that level of water would be higher. And a child that struggles with conservation would essentially forget what they've just seen, forget that they've just watched an adult pour the water, exactly the same water into a glass, and they would now believe that the taller glass has more water. And the other one is the coin task, which is in the second picture there, which is when you spread um, one line of coins or counters out uh, a bit longer than one line, and then, then the bottom line, and then the child who struggles to hold the information that there's the same number of coins, simply chooses the longer line and says, well, there's more coins there because it just looks longer. Uh, when it comes to being egocentric, Piaget used the famous volcano or mountain task, which is pictured on the right hand side. And children basically really struggled with explaining what the person on the other side of the mountain could see or what they might draw. When you ask the child, what can the doll see? Um, the child normally would just explain what they themselves can see. So that's the end of the stage two. 
Stage three is the concrete operational stage, and this is from ages seven to 11. Uh, for us, not much really happens in this stage. Yes, they develop a little bit more in their reasoning. Um, they can talk more about concrete physical things. They struggle with abstract ideas, but most importantly, they sort of master and show a good understanding of conservation and they are no longer egocentric. Moving on to the fourth and final stage, uh, the formal operational stage. Piaget said this is for people who are 11 and older. And again, simply at this point, uh, children become quite capable of formal reasoning. So they can start to think in abstract, hypothetical ways and they can solve abstract problems in systematic styles. So when it comes to Piaget, we evaluate him very quickly. Uh, four questions for you to think about there, and I'll run through the evaluations now. So the first positive thing about Piaget's work is that he was incredibly influential. He inspired hundreds of psychologists to research um, into this area of development and children. Um, and it, that was huge, huge for psychology. It really pushed it on. It was groundbreaking. His uh, his theory and his research had a huge impact on education. So that's also really positive. It's been applied to the real world. It's been used and we'll go into a bit more detail in a minute on how it's had an impact on education. Now, Piaget had a bit of a problem when it comes to generalization, and that is because he used a very specific sample um, of children. He only used middle class children from Switzerland. So all of his research really does struggle to generalize outside of Switzerland. There may well be an extraneous variable in the Swiss education system, which might explain how these children were egocentric or why these children were struggling with conservation, for example. Maybe that doesn't happen over in the UK. And finally, we have evidence, don't we, from some research, uh, which we'll run through in a minute, that Piaget actually underestimated or overestimated the children in his original research. We have the policeman doll study and the naughty teddy study, which show that children younger than Piaget thought could show skills such as conservation and could view from somebody else's point of view. Let's run through this evaluation now in a little bit more detail. So we could get asked in the exam how Piaget impacted education. So let's run through the three ways that he did that. Firstly, he recommended now, as a result of his research, that she, uh, teachers for their children should take a readiness approach. Now, this is basically based on the idea that children develop in stages. And Piaget is basically saying that teachers should only present new learning when a child is mentally ready and at the right stage. So, for example, if a child is four years old, um, we know that now that they're egocentric, Stop asking them to think from somebody else's point of view. They're not ready. That's just an example. The second thing that Piaget suggested is that teachers should take an active approach. Now, this is also based on the idea that children are egocentric. And this is um, essentially the idea that teachers should allow children to discover things themselves or from each other because they need to see it through their own eyes. That's because they're egocentric. It's no good standing in front of a five-year-old telling them how to do something, they need to see it themselves. They need to do it themselves. Keyword in that explanation is discover, because that means that they will do it themselves. And the final thing is that teachers should be aware of conservation, and that is that children can't hold information for very long. So instructions should be short, as children struggle to hold information for too long. So basically, don't overload children with lots of information and instructions. So those are the three things that we can take away that Piaget suggested for education. And as we just evaluated him, uh, this is how you could expand on an evaluation, any of these things, what Piaget recommended. Right, now let's talk about the research that started to question and query Piaget. Firstly, we have the Hughes Policeman Doll Study. Uh, I won't read through the study. I'll bring it up. You can have a quick read of it yourselves um, using this video. You can pause it and I'll explain it a little bit more on my next little slide. Okay, so essentially, if you can't remember, Hughes took a um, kind of like an intersecting wall. This diagram in the middle here is like a top-down view. And what he did is he put two policeman dolls 
at two of those points. So we've got one policeman dial at the top here who can see into two sections, number one and number two of this quadrant. And we've got a policeman dial on the right here who can also see into two quadrants, quadrant two and quadrant four. And Hughes basically asked the children to place a doll uh, where the policeman dolls could not see could not see him. And the only correct answer is quadrant three, because no police officer can see into quadrant three. And basically Hughes was just seeing how many children would place it into the correct quadrant. And if you read the study through again, you would have seen that 90% of children ages three and a half to five could do it, uh, which kind of shows us that Piaget may have got his ages completely wrong. Uh, maybe he didn't truly understand how egocentric children were. Maybe he didn't use good enough research. Maybe there was a problem with his mountain volcano task. I mean, when it comes to this eval uh, evaluation of this study, we in immediately can talk about the volcano task. And that is that, you know, this game that Hughes was playing with the children uh, was a lot more child friendly. It was very much like a game of hide and seek, which is something that children are very familiar with. Whereas the mountain task, very confusing. Children may not have truly understood. So it made it look like Piaget found egocentric children when actually the children just didn't understand. On the negatives uh, of the Hughes study, we could also mention the low ecological validity. Um, again, it's in a lab setting, children under a bit of pressure. Um, I suppose you could also say that it's potentially unethical to research on children. Um, we have evidence that, or we have, there is ideas out there that there may be a little bias, a little bit of researcher bias involved, uh, that the researchers may have hinted at the correct answer. So we have to take these results with a little bit of a, a little bit, a little bit of care because ninety percent is very high, um, and obviously if the results were biased, we can't truly trust them. But also uh, the general sample is very small and a small sample makes it very difficult to generalise the results. So that's the policeman doll study. Well, what about conservation? What about oh, um, Piaget's ideas on conservation? Well, that was investigated by McGarrigal and Donaldson. Again, I won't read through the study, so I'll pop it up here. But I think a key piece of information is to notice straight away that all the children are from Edinburgh, um, capital of Scotland. But that's something that we could talk about. So you can have a quick read through of this in your own time. So just to explain it in a little bit more detail, the coin task, um, essentially Piaget used to do it with essentially an adult. An adult would lay five coins in two rows and would ask the children which line, which row has more counters or coins. And the children here would say, yep, yeah, they're the same. Um, and then the adult would spread one of them out like that. And then the adult would say, well, which one's got more now? Uh, the children would normally pick the second line because it looks longer. However, the only difference in the Naughty Teddy study is that sometimes uh, after the adult had done the first part, the, uh, the adult would get a Naughty Teddy or a puppet to come along and the puppet would mess around with the coins and then the puppet would spread all the coins out and the adult would then say oh no that the naughty teddy's messed it all up which one's got more coins in it and this time the children would be really good and they would say well they were the same uh, this kind of shows that the children do have conservation skills uh, but maybe again there was something wrong with Piaget's original study his original research so what can we say about the Naughty Teddy study? Uh, well, again, we'll firstly start by comparing the methodology to Piaget's, uh, and we can say that it possibly was a little bit better than Piaget. Again, it was a ch it was more child friendly. Okay, bringing the teddy out, children are a bit more familiar with this, uh, and also there's a bit of pressure on a child. If an adult moves something, the child probably thinks that something's had to have changed. So that's bit of a positive here that the child would feel more confident and comfortable and understand a bit more. Secondly, the study has been repeated quite a lot. So that's a really good thing. So we've got, you know, it was highly controlled. It's been repeated. Uh, so it's been, it's quite reliable. Uh, again, we've got problems with the sample and that is that all the children did come from Scotland. Um, so we can't really generalize the results of the cultures. Um, there may well be, like we said for Piaget's 
original research all coming from Switzerland, the fact that all these children come from Scotland, there may be an extraneous variable in, for example, Scottish education, which is influencing how how good these children are at conservation. Uh, what does 62% suggest? Well, it tells us that nearly 40% of children still failed it. So you know, maybe Piaget was right. Maybe lots of children don't get conservation until they're seven. And again, it was a highly unnatural situation. So low ecological validity, unnatural behaviour. Right, as a quick recap, we've just run through uh, everything we need to know about Piaget for this topic, his stages, the evaluation of him, how he impacted education, and the two studies that show he underestimated children and their ability. Guys, keep revising, and I'll see you in the next video.